Today we're going to be going over the Ableton Instrument Rack Bundle that's part of the Hard Dance Destruction Suite. If you aren't familiar with Ableton Instruments, they're a lot like VSTs except they're completely Ableton native. This bundle comes with 11 of the most insane racks that you could possibly have to create Hard Dance. I'm not going to dive into each one individually on a super deep level, I'm going to take care of that in another video, but I am going to use each one and start writing a song just to show you how easy it really is to use these racks. So the first rack I want to go over is this kick generator rack. For each one of these racks, there's macros, presets, and then there's a random button here in the top right corner. So first thing I'm going to do is start by making a MIDI clip. So I'm going to make a MIDI note at C3, and then I'm going to duplicate it across the clip in quarter note increments. Then when we hit play, it should sound like this. So inside this kick rack is a sampler, and inside the sampler are 20 kick samples. Now, if we were to just throw 20 kick samples in here and hit play, it would be 20 samples stacked on top of each other playing at the same time. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this select editor tab. Then from there, we're going to right click in the window and hit distribute ranges equally. So what this will do is this will allow our macro knob to control which sample is going to be triggered. So if we hit play and move the kick selector knob, you'll actually hear the kick sample being changed in real time. This makes it incredibly easy to dial in which kick you want when you're writing a track. So that's how these instrument racks work. We got 10 more to go through, so I'm not gonna dive as deep into those as I did for this. So let's keep moving. So the next rack we're gonna look at is the side bass generator. So let's start by again making another MIDI clip. I'm gonna make a MIDI note at G this time. And instead of making quarter notes, I'm gonna make 16th notes and copy it across. So right off the bat, you can see that this has a lot more macro knobs than the kick generator rack. So I'm going to hit play, and I'm just going to play around with some of these macro knobs until I get something I like. We have side 1 select and side 2 select. So in the kick rack, there was one sampler playing. But in this rack, there's actually two samplers playing simultaneously. Since each sampler is playing at the same time, this allows you to get really interesting combinations of different side bass samples. Besides being able to just switch the samples, you have the power to do so much more with these racks. There's a low pass filter and a filter decay. So if I hit play and move this low pass filter, you'll actually hear the MIDI envelope clamping down on these sounds. And you can control how long it takes to clamp down with this filter decay. It just gives me a really consistent and tight sound. Beyond the sample selecting and the filtering, we have erosion, erosion frequency, erosion decay, drive, high end boost, sub boost, boost frequency, and a limiter. But I'm gonna hit play and mess around with a few of these macro knobs so you get an idea of what it sounds like. So I'm going to command Z a few times because I really did like what we had before. So the next rack we're going to talk about is this donk bass generator rack. This rack is set up very similarly to the side bass rack. So I'm going to go ahead and make another MIDI clip. I'm going to make a donk pattern by putting a MIDI note at G. And this note's going to be played on the off beat. So let's go ahead and duplicate this across. And if we hit play, it'll sound like this. This rack features donk select, low pass filter, filter decay, erosion, erosion frequency, erosion decay, drive, high end boost, sub boost, boost frequency, a stereo boost that's actually mono compatible, that's really sick, and a limiter. Also, something that I haven't mentioned while explaining the previous racks is that each one of these racks comes with presets. And these presets are basically just snapshots of different macro positions. So this to me is where Ableton racks gain an edge over VSTs. 
I'm going to hit play and I'm not going to move any of these macro knobs. I'm just going to click through these presets so you can see how it works. While we're on the topic of presets, what you can also do is click this random button at the top right corner, and this will randomize all the macro positions. So let's say you like that one, which I really do. You can hit new, come down here, and type in donk21. And if you click this little camera button right here, this will actually take a snapshot of this macro position. so you can access it again. The next rack we're gonna go over is the clap rack. This rack has four clap samplers that you can play individually or simultaneously. Not only can you select which sample you want each sampler to play, but you can also adjust the pitch of each clap individually. I'm gonna make a MIDI clip, and I'm gonna make a simple clap pattern, which is a clap falling on the point two and the point four of each bar. And just to spice things up, I'm going to add a little variation at the end of this pattern. Now let's hit play and see what it sounds like. So besides the clap select and clap pitch, we have delay for claps three and four, reverb for all claps, drive, drive amount, clap decay, which is controlling the decay of the amplitude envelope. We have a reverb decay, a transient shaper, and the decay of the transient shaper. So I'm not going to go ahead and play with all of these knobs, but what I am going to do is hit play and flip through some of these presets to show you what it sounds like. I really like how that sounds. That sounds huge. The next rack we're going to talk about is this open hat generator rack. This rack features two samplers that each contain open hat samples, so you can play them simultaneously or individually. Each sampler has its own pitch control. There's also a global control for attack and decay. As for processing, there's reverb, echo, and drive. Let's make a MIDI clip, and I'm going to insert an open hat on the upbeat. Now let's hit play and hear what it sounds like. So I really like how this sounds, but let's flip through some of these presets and see if we can find anything we like more. I really like how this sixth preset sounds, so let's just go ahead and move forward with that. The next rack I want to go over is this snare generator rack. This rack features two snares that can be played simultaneously or separately. There's individual pitch controls for these snares as well as drive dry wet and drive amount. The coolest part about this rack is this transient shaper. And this is what I really want to show you. So to demonstrate this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this loop and I'm going to make a snare fill at the end of this phrase. So if we listen to this fill, this is what it should sound like. What I want to show you, though, is this transient shaper. Inside of this rack, there's a MIDI envelope. And what this MIDI envelope is doing is it's just turning up this utility every time the snare is triggered. Now let's try to listen to it when we turn the transient shaper down all the way. It just doesn't have that same punch. It is a night and day difference. It sounds so good. So I'm going to loop this last bar of the phrase and let's flip through some of these presets to see if we can find the right snares for this phrase. I really like this 10th preset, so that's what we're going to go with. This rack is extremely similar to the open hat generator, except you'll notice these two macro knobs on the right vocoder decay and vocoder amount. And what this is going to do is this is going to control the amount of noise that's added via the vocoder to the closed hat. 
giving it almost a splashy kind of sound. Let's start by making a one bar loop, and I'm going to drag this across so it keeps looping itself. We're going to make a 16th note pattern, but adjust the velocity to get that classic groove. So I'm going to solo the closed hats and press play and start flipping through the presets so you can see what the macro knobs do. Now let's say we have a really tight hat like this. You can see that there's an attack control, a decay control, and these vocoder knobs. Now that sounds a little better to me, but we can use this vocoder to make it splashy. And what's really cool is we can also automate this. Now let's automate the vocoder to turn up during the offbeat. This way the hat on the upbeat is a little splashier than the rest of the hats. So let's copy that across. Now what we've done is we've accented that upbeat even more. And this is why I love macroing as many things as possible to these racks. So the next rack we're going to go over is this perk generator rack. This rack contains four percussion samplers that each have different samples inside. Each sampler has its own pitch control as well as sample selecting control. As far as the processing goes, there's echo, reverb, a frequency shifter, and some heavy compression to glue everything together. So let's start by making a one bar MIDI clip and dragging it across the pattern so it keeps looping. Let's turn off everything but the kick and the percussion generator so we can hear what this loop sounds like. So I don't really like how that sounds right out of the gate. So let's go through and flip through some of these presets. And I already really like how that sounds. Just through clicking through the presets and adjusting a few of these macro knobs, I already have something I love. Now in the context of the whole song, it sounds a bit messy. So let's listen to it again and keep dialing it in. Yes, that sounds so good. Making percussion loops is typically so annoying for me because I'm always wanting to swap sounds in and out, but this makes it so easy to do that. The next rack I wanna go over is this Tom Generator rack. This is one of my favorite racks because it solves a huge problem for me. Every time I want a Tom fill, I'm typically typing in Tom fill or whatever in my Ableton browser. And I'm never finding exactly what I want, whether it's the pattern, the length, or the tom samples themselves. So this rack is pretty similar to the other racks where it has four different samplers, each containing tom samples. Each sampler has its own individual pitch control, which is really useful for making tom fills. On top of that, we have gated reverb, the amount of gate applied to that reverb, the length of the gate. We have a pan spread, which is really cool. I'll explain that later. We have a delay, and we could either go dotted eighth notes or eighth notes and we have compression and distortion. So I'm gonna turn off this snare fill that we have at the end of the phrase and make a tom fill. Now let's turn off everything but the kick and the tom and hear what it sounds like. Now this already sounds really good, but we can take it a little further. Let's take a look at this delay and start by turning that on. Already that's adding so much groove to this tom fill and the difference between the straight eighth notes and the dotted eighth note delay is so huge. On top of that we have this gated reverb. Now this gated reverb is kind of like an 80s style reverb. 
Let's listen to it without the reverb. It is night and day difference. It sounds so much better to me with this reverb on. So now let's talk about this pan spread. This is one of my favorite features I've put in any of my racks. So I loaded up an imager so we can see exactly what's going on in the stereo field. Let's start by turning down the reverb, delay, and the pan spread and hear what it sounds like. These toms are hitting right down the middle with minimal stereo information. Now listen and look what happens when we turn the pan spread up. I added this feature because I wanted you to be able to hear the toms like you would if you were sitting in a drummer's seat. I think this adds a great stereo effect and just makes it so much more interesting. So the next rack we're going to go over is this Ride Simple Generator rack. This rack is just like the open hat rack, except it's tailor-made for ride cymbals. When I'm making a ride pattern, I know exactly what I'm looking for, and I don't want to waste any time looking for samples and processing. I just want it to be ready for me. And that's exactly what we have here. So let's make a MIDI clip and drag it across the phrase. Just like the open hats, I'm going to make MIDI notes on the upbeat. And now let's hit play and listen to what we have. So right off the bat, that sounds incredible, but let's flip through some of these presets and see what else it has. So yeah, this ride rack is a great tool to have in your arsenal when it comes to writing songs. So the last rack we're going to go over is this crash symbol generator. I picked this one last because while it's extremely useful, it's also very simple. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by duplicating this pattern once again. Except what I'm going to do is I'm going to alternate between these two fills. So we create even more variation with our track. So let's start by adding a crash on the downbeat of bar one. I'm going to add another crash on the downbeat of bar 5, but I want to create a crash fill right here. Now let's try changing the second crash. So that's everything inside the Ableton Instrument Rack Bundle. I made these racks with hard dance in mind, but I've had a lot of success using them in other genres as well. I use them every day and they're definitely a must have in my production toolbox. Also, make sure to check out the Hard Dance Destruction Suite. This suite contains these instrument racks as well as a thousand samples, 200 serum presets, 25 Ableton processing racks, and three Ableton templates. I'll link both of these in the description below.